Okay, so what we're looking at today are the components of the Alpha 2 experiment. This is the successor to Alpha. So what we're looking at today are the components of what we call the Alpha 2 experiment. This is the successor to Alpha. What we've done this year is completely rebuilt the machine, made a completely new experiment that will give us more capabilities for the future. So Alpha 2 will concentrate on making measurements of anti-hydrogen atoms which are trapped, held on in the uh, magnetic trap. So let's take a look at what we have down here. We start directly below, you see a green solenoid magnet, this part that's actually installed on the beam line. This is the Alpha 2 catching trap. What it does is it accumulates all the antiprotons that come from the AD. So we get a shot every 100 seconds. We trap it in there and hold it, cool it down, and keep accumulating antiprotons when they send them to us. So this is a separate device. It's kind of a reservoir for antiprotons. In the original Alpha machine, that was incorporated into one apparatus. Here it's completely separate. So it'll run kind of asynchronously, just sitting there catching antiprotons all the time. The next thing to look at is over here, this uh, large tower with the horizontal tube. This is the cryostat for the Alpha 2 atom trap. The superconducting magnets that make up the atom trap are inside that horizontal tube. This vertical tower contains liquid helium and gas and the connections for the very large currents that are needed to put into the atom trap. This was built in Triumph, designed and pre-built in Triumph in Vancouver in Canada. It was delivered here about a week and a half ago and we've been busily trying to assemble this to get it ready. Inside that long tube are eight superconducting coils that were made at Brookhaven National Laboratory in the United States. They're buried within layers of that tube there. They all get cooled down to four degrees Kelvin with liquid helium to make a superconducting atom trap. Also in there are the penning traps, the traps for the charged particles, the antiprotons and the positrons that are used to form the antihydrogen atoms. So that's kind of the heart of the device. Now, over here, this nice shiny cylinder is a, another superconducting magnet, a superconducting solenoid made in uh, Oxford Instruments in the UK and financed by the Carlsberg Fund Foundation in Denmark. This magnet costs about a half a million euros and is paid for by the, the scientific charitable arm of the Carlsberg Corporation, the Carlsberg Foundation. That will slide over this uh, horizontal nose to provide an external, constant external field for the trapping of the charged particles and the formation of anti-hydrogen. Okay? So those are the, by the way, this catching trap was built at the Cockcroft Institute. Okay? This is another new part of the Alpha 2 machine. This is the silicon detector which detects the annihilation of anti-hydrogen when we release it. That's how we know that we've had anti-hydrogen. We release it and look for the annihilation of the anti-proton. This is reconfigured from the Alpha machine. It's made at the University of Liverpool in the United Kingdom. It's uh, very similar to what you'll find in the tracking detectors at the center of LHC experiments. This is a vertex detector for antiproton annihilations. This is the annihilation detector, the silicon detector for detecting the annihilation of antihydrogen when it's released from the alpha trap. This is how we detect that we've trapped something, usually by releasing it. So this is a tracking particle detector, very similar to what you'll find at the center of an LHC experiment. It measures the annihilation products of antiprotons from antihydrogen annihilation. This is partly refurbished from alpha and also features some new components and is constructed at the University of Liverpool in the United Kingdom. From here? Yeah. Okay. Just wait, just wait. But we need to do it. 
it again. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the new components that make up the Alpha 2 experiment. Alpha 2 is a complete redesign of Alpha. It's a brand new experiment that adds new capabilities that we didn't have in the original Alpha experiment. Most importantly, we want to use lasers to study the structure of trapped antihydrogen. And this device gives us a capability for introducing laser light into the interaction volume. So we'll start here. This is the catching trap where we stop and catch the antiprotons that come to us from the antiproton decelerator. Every 100 seconds we get a shot of antiprotons, about 30 to 40 million. They go into this magnet. There's a charged particle trap inside there. They get stopped and cooled down and held in a very good vacuum. In the next 100 seconds we get some more. They get added. We just keep there accumulating them and then later, when we need some, we we'll extract some fraction of those from this reservoir of antiprotons. This, by the way, was built at the Cockcroft Institute, at Darsbury Lab in the United Kingdom. These are some new collaborators in Alpha, Cockcroft and the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom took responsibility for this. And this has been operating since about June. This was the first part of Alpha 2 to be completed and commissioned, and it's working very well. So by the way, right now we're working 16 hours a day, constructing Alpha 2, eight hours a day, running this part of it on the night shift. So we're 24 seven right now. This next lovely piece of equipment is uh, a superconducting solenoid magnet built in Oxford Instruments in the United Kingdom, and very importantly, financed by the Carlsberg Foundation in Denmark. Carlsberg is, of course, the, the beer company, but they have a, a, a foundation that supports basic research in Denmark, and I was able to get financing for this very nice piece of equipment from them. This provides a constant one Tesla field for trapping the charged particles that are used to make antihydrogen. Now, if you look, this magnet actually sits on a, a cart that can has wheels and can slide over here. Let's take a look. So this is the heart of the new Alpha 2 apparatus. This is the cryostat, or liquid helium vessel, and inside here are the superconducting magnets that one uses to trap the antihydrogen atoms. We use very strong magnetic fields to hold on to the, the atom after it's formed. So inside here, the charged particles are combined to make antihydrogen and then to hold on to it. We can't see it right now, but at either end of this one, we can shine laser beams into the volume so that they overlap with the trapped atom that's bouncing around inside. We hope to use those to actually study the structure, the internal structure of the antihydrogen atom. This is our goal, after all, is to understand if hydrogen and antihydrogen look the same, which is what the current laws of physics require. So we want to do very sensitive measurements on the internal structure of antihydrogen inside this machine. Okay, so the cryostat arrived about two weeks ago in three huge crates. It came from Triumph in uh, Vancouver, in Canada. And we've been spending the last two weeks assembling this thing, putting it together, uh, it's very, very complicated inside. It looks very simple when you see the outer tube, but there are three other layers of, of complexity inside this thing, including the superconducting magnets that uh, had to be wired very carefully. There are several hundred connections that go through there and go up through the tower of liquid helium. So the main activity has been getting this thing built in the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned, the catching trap was finished in June. We've been operating very stably with it since June. That uh, went very well and on schedule. We're a little bit behind, of course, as we always are on a project like this. We have until December 17th 
Today is November 9th. December 17th is the last day of BEAM for this year. So we, we're still working very hard to get this installed. By the way, it all pushes over into the BEAM line, as you can imagine. To get this installed, take some BEAM, try to make some antihydrogen before the end of the year. Because as you maybe know, CERN is shutting down for about a year and a half. There'll be no BEAM at all, no antiprotons for us. So we'd really like to get some experience with this machine before it shuts down so we can iterate, we can make any changes necessary over the coming shutdown. I should also point out at the top of this tower, if you're an LHC fan, you'll recognize those are current leads that are used in the LHC. These are very kindly provided to us by the CERN cryogenics group from uh, Amelia Ballerino. They carry the current from room temperature down to four degrees Kelvin, very high currents up to a thousand amps. This is directly borrowed from the LHC. These are LHC components made available to us by CERN. So we're very, very grateful for that. And uh, now we're in the final stages of connecting all this up, pumping it down, hopefully cooling it down by the end of next week so that we can actually put some current in these magnets and make sure that everything works, all right? This magnet also arrived about a week ago from Oxford in the UK. It's now being cooled down, ready for, for service. So everything is here now. Everything is on site. We're getting it all ready, packed up, and we're hoping within a week or so we'll be in a stage where we can start actually learning how this device works. Okay, so 2012 for us is a rebuilding year. We, we decided to be very aggressive. We had a device that was working very well. We had made the first measurement on antihydrogen, trapped antihydrogen for a thousand seconds. So that was all very good, but we knew that that device had limitations. So we decided within the space of a year to try to rebuild it completely. That was very ambitious, but we're very, very close to achieving that goal. We didn't have any particular physics goals for this year. We know that this device is very challenging and it would take us a year to get it together. What we hope for this year is to just get it installed, get some charged particles in it, make sure that it works the way it should, perhaps make some antihydrogen and trap it. Uh, but we don't anticipate doing any measurements this year. We never talked about the serious possibility of making measurements this year. So this is a, a development year, a rebuilding year, and we'll start again in 2014 with a device that's ready to go and trap and measure antihydrogen. So the, the main difference between Alpha 2 and the original Alpha machine is that we've added the ability to introduce laser lights into the volume where the antihydrogen atoms are trapped. That's the physics issue that we'd like to tackle next. How does antihydrogen interact with laser lights? In other words, does it have the same spectrum as, anti as hydrogen does? So in Alpha, we didn't have the ability. There were no windows into the apparatus. We've designed a very elaborate system of windows into the apparatus that allows us to introduce various types of laser lights. And that will be our main physics program when we start up. We'll also continue the microwave measurements that we did in Alpha, the so-called spin flip of measuring the magnetic character of the trapped antihydrogen atoms. Alpha also has the ability and an improved ability to make precision measurements using that microwave transition. So there are other things to come in the future, but those are the first two things to work on when this machine becomes fully commissioned, hopefully in uh, 2014. Okay. So this flange here will be mounted on the, the beam line. And you see there are four small openings here. This is an opening where a window, a transparent window will be mounted so the laser beam can be shot into the apparatus and overlap the antihydrogen beam. So there are there's one of these on each end, so the laser kind of crosses at an angle, a slight angle, across where the antihydrogen is trapped. So hopefully you can excite the internal structure of the antihydrogen atom 
using laser light that goes in through one of these ports. so easy working where you can't. You can't get two hands in your head in at the same time. Wow. 